when. Hi everyone, my name is Cameron and today we're back at another book review and once again we're doing a total money makeover and when I was reading I realized there's a lot of differences between the 4 hour work week and total money, total money makeover. So they, sometimes they disagree but I found a way that they don't completely disagree and how you could work between both of them. So uh, yeah, the 4 hour work week, if you missed it then once again you uh, you could probably just go back to uh, our YouTube channel, which is called Kenneth and Cameron once again, and I'm actually almost done with the, the, oh my gosh. The blog? No, the, the yeah, the writing, the writing. The, the writing summary of the four hour work week. So, if you want to see what's going on, I won't, I won't post it until it's completely done, because um, I, I don't think you guys want to see the incomplete version of it. So, um, yeah, you just visit Cameron Fan blog, and I'm sure my mom will have a link. And so, let's go on to the actual book review. So, all right. Last time we were talking about all these different myths, and that's pretty much what we did all of chapter three, chapter two. Actually, I need, I need to look back. That was chapter three. Today we're going to complete chapter three and move on to chapter four. So yesterday we had a lot of myths, and today we have even more um, myth busters. So um, we're going to get rid of the myths and truths, and yeah, that's pretty much all we have planned for today. Because that's going to take up a lot of this book, and pretty much the whole book is about that. And that's not the whole book, but it's a, it's quite a lot of the book. Yeah, mo most of the book, pretty much. I can just see it. So, well, I'm sure it it will just end around the the seventy page mark. I'm pretty sure. And right now, uh, we left off at around thirty five. So, we're gonna see another video of myths maybe one more video after that and then we could get on to some more storytelling so <clears throat> the last myth and truth we did was the myth you can get a good deal on a new car at zero percent interest and the truth was a new car loses 60 percent of its value in the first four years that isn't zero percent so yeah let's go on to our first myth of the day. So, first one is you should get a credit card to build your credit. So that's a myth, and a lot of people. I'm sure this is very very common. My mom used to think it, and I'm sure she maybe still think it until I tell her this. But um, I used to think it was because because I learned it from other people. But um, that was the myth. You should get a credit card to build your credit, and if you think about it, that does seem pretty good. You should get credit cards but credit but the truth is you won't use credit cards during your total money makeover except maybe for mortgage and you don't need a credit card for that meaning you're not going to be using a credit card and i'm going to explain what we're going to use instead of credit cards within the next myth so yeah um the truth is you don't need credit cards and the rest of the explanation was the best myth is to build your credit and that's what all these mortgage lenders they 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 made up that myth so that they can um it became pretty it was so it became so popular it became pretty much a legend and everyone knows it uh yeah everyone knows that you need to uh build your credit by getting a credit card but guess where that rumor was started from loan loaning companies so they just want you to borrow their money so that's kind of like a slogan in a way at this point so I don't know. I don't know why. How many times I said so, but uh, let's get on to the next uh, myth and truth. Now I'm going to explain why credit cards. You don't need them. I mean, a lot of people use credit cards. Like I'm pretty sure you're using one right now. So, um, the myth is you need a credit card to rent a car, check into a hotel, and buy online. The truth is, a debit card will do all of that. True, but a lot of people will be very skeptical about. Debit cards, no, not skeptical, but the skeptical about the companies that are going to be using your debit card. And I'm more afraid to use your debit card because it's my money. I don't want to use my money. I don't use other people's money. But 
let's get on to why. So, it just talked about pretty much what a debit card and a credit card is. So, if you don't know, which I'm pretty sure you should know, but credit cards when you're just borrowing other people's money, and debit cards when your own money. And it says that the debit card can do virtually anything a credit card could do, which is true. And it's in the debit card doesn't get you into any debt. So this story is about zero debt, hundred percent, zero percent debt. So if you um, a lot of books would disagree, but if you want to, if your problem right now is to get out of debt, like you're so you're in so much debt, then you should then you should read this book. But if you are free of debt and you want to expand. Then you might need to borrow a ton of money. So this book is about getting yourself out of debt and how to avoid it in the future if you want to avoid it. But a lot of people do like to play on the riskier end, and I might do that. But a lot of people like to play on the riskier end. So like you have more risk, but you gain a lot more profit. But not that much more risk because I'm pretty sure everyone's like experiencing it already. Everyone's risking themselves because I'm sure like n not a lot of people will be using only debit cards. So. If you want to um, be a little bit different, then you can try to get a lot of debt, and you use that debt to, um, like, it, like you use that hundred dollars you got yourself in debt to, and you could use that towards your investments to grow two hundred, rather than using your own money to do that. So, um, next thing is the myth would be the debit card had more risk than a credit card, and um, the truth is. No, so it doesn't have any more risk. Debit card is pretty much a credit card, but not really. It's just it's just, it's just your money. So, um, a lot of uh, a lot of people think it's a lot riskier to do this because a lot of financial experts have like spread this myth to the point it pretty much became very popular and. Uh, they get debit cards get the same protection by like Visa and all those other companies because no they just get the same protection as credit cards, and they get the same protection in cases of theft and fraud. So if you're thinking it'd be a lot easier to get your debit card stolen than your credit card, then they're the same. And if you're thinking getting my debit card stolen is worse than my credit card. Then not really, because if you got stolen money from your credit card, you will owe ten thousand dollars most likely. But if you got money stolen from your credit from your, from your debit card, and not your credit, then you'd still owe that much money. So it's it's pretty much the same thing, except for you're not getting into any debt. I just really cannot explain. Um, the myth would be if you pay off your credit card each month, you get the free use of of someone else's money. That would be true. But the truth is even more true. <laughs> so, yeah, if if you pay off your debit card, I'm no 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 not your debit card. If you pay off your credit card, then you would get free use of your money besides the interest. But like it's yeah whatever. But the truth is, card track says that sixty percent of people don't pay off their credit cards every month. So if you're thinking credit cards will give me free money, the truth is, I mean this well not not free money but free borrowing. Then the truth is. You're likely not going to pay it back because sixty percent of people don't even pay back the credit cards. So that came straight from a credit card company. So I'm pretty sure they know exactly what they're talking about. So, uh, you you then it's not a guarantee you're going to pay back your credit cards. So uh, it's not exactly free money. Okay. Um. And the rest of it, it was just talking about uh, how bank study of uh, bankruptcy filers reveals that sixty nine percent of filers for bankruptcy say that credit card debt caused the bankruptcy. So that does make a lot of sense because a lot of people owe money on the credit card, and you can get bankrupt because all that debt. So um, I just skipped the story. Uh, skipped the story because that one was too interesting. So. Here's another story, and then uh, I forgot to tell you this, but these aren't actually his stories. They kind of are his stories, but people who read his book are telling them their stories about how his book helped them a lot. Oh my, what happened? Fix this. So, I'm just going to read the whole story because it's I, I really like this story. 
and it, it, it would relate to a lot of people. And this dude right now is 30 years old. His name is David and Ty Taylor, but that's with an E. That's when you wrote the book. Huh? Oh, you mean David or Tyler? Okay, Tyler. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Dave Ramsey wrote this book. Mm -hmm. He has stories from other people. Oh, okay. These aren't his stories. Okay. People who read his book email him random stories about their own lives saying, Thank you for helping me. This was my life before. Now here's after and what I did to change. Mm -hmm. And this story came from David and Taylor. Um, Taylor and David and Taylor G Jarrett. So, um, you have his story now. I got my first credit card when I was 18. Is that pretty normal? So, actually, I'm not sure if I skipped something. Oh my gosh, I did skip one. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see a story later. Because I, I realized, why does this story tell me about this, about, um, why is the, uh, the moral of the story something that I haven't read to you yet? So, I'm going to have to, um, so you'll be really confused by what he's talking about. So, I'm going to go through what happened, then I'll go through what he's talking about. So, the myth is, make sure your teenager gets a credit card so he or she will learn how to be responsible for money. So, that, that would make a lot of sense to a lot of parents. Like, maybe my teenager would be a lot more responsible with money if I gave them money to spend. But the truth is, getting a credit card for a teenager is an excellent way to teach him or her how to be financially irresponsible. That's why teens are now the number one target of credit card companies. Think about it. If you had teens, why would credit card companies target them? Because they, they don't have that much experience, they don't know what they're doing. I probably don't know what I'm doing, but um, they don't know what they're doing and they're most likely going to burn all their money. And so I'm probably not going to get one. Are you going to get one? No. I'm probably going to get one when I'm 18 or something. Or maybe not one at all. So, um, credit card companies target teens because they don't have any money. They know they're not going to pay it back and then those uh, those companies really want their interest, so they're just going to take a lot of the money. That's why I target them. So, uh, think of the rest of the pages will be dedicated to the evil credit card companies. But then you have—I was going to say it—if you throw your teen in a pool of sharks to teach him how to stay safe from sharks, it's not going to work. Your teen's just going to be a target from sharks and try to play with the sharks instead of avoid them. So make sure you don't throw a teen into a pool of sharks to teach him shark safety. So That's a good analogy. Okay, let's get on to this actual story. This guy, uh, I, don't, I think he, uh, he kind of messed up big time. Like, very, very messed up. So, um, I'm not sure, like, uh... I got my first credit card when I was 18. Getting into it feel like a rite of passage to adulthood. I can't understand. That 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 does seem like an adulthood um, ticket. So, um, he didn't know how it really worked. He didn't even understand the money had to be paid back. Now, why didn't his parents teach him that before he got him a credit card? That seems like his parents' fault. So, um... He ended up losing his job, and the bills started to pay, pile up, and he moved out of his apartment into his truck. Jeez, how, how do you live in a truck? The truck got repossessed, practically homeless. For, for far too long, he used his credit cards to buy anything and everything. I wasn't budgeting at all, and I continued to treat my credit card as income. That is very, very messed up. He uses his credit card as if it's a paycheck, income, and not knowing that I have to pay back my paycheck. Why is that? Because it's not a paycheck. So, um, he screwed up very, very bad, and I'm pretty sure it'd be common sense that the government won't just give you free money, right? I'm not sure why he didn't know that, but he, he just spent all of his credit card money. He just destroyed his credit, and he just burnt all his money pretty much. He somehow got married, and his debt continued to cause him and his wife a lot of stress and worry. 
and I'm not sure what Section 8 housing was, but they lived there, and... But Section 8 housing is for people who need help with financial. They can't afford house. Mm -hmm. Well, is it is it really dangerous there? No, it's for low-income families. Is it like a neighborhood? Uh-huh. Well, it says that um his wife was scared to be there alone, and um it said... Uh, okay, let's keep skipping and something about living pay to pay, paycheck to paycheck and he heard Dave Ramsey on the radio and then read Total Money Makeover and he paid off all his debt and lived happily ever after. So mm -hmm. no one I have hard to summarize it. They just they, they just paid all of their bills. So that's pretty much what it was. Happy mm -hmm. ending. So uh let's get on to some ne the next um, Next, ne next myth and truth. So, Kid Branding, it's a story from Dave. So, it's his actual story from himself. He has a kid. I did not know that until I read this paragraph. And by the time he was 11, he taught him, uh, he read Visa, the official card of Whoville, and how the Grinch stole Christmas. Meaning, he's teaching his son that credit cards are the Grinch and that you need to avoid them and how the credit cards stole Christmas. So he was telling him that credit cards are really bad when he was 11 years old and that's like me, I'm like 12, but, um, I, so he just taught him a lot about how bad credit cards were. And the myth would be that consolidation saves interest and you have one small payment. So I, my mom taught me a lot about it. It's pretty much when uh, you have a car payment, that's just an example, you don't have to specifically that, and you have $10,000 owned on your car that you took a loan out on, and then the, the interest is like 20%, and you don't want to pay that super high interest, because it's going to hurt you very badly, so instead, use your house payment, like your house loan, because you have, uh, the interest rate on the house is like 1%, or like 2%, that's just, that's just maybe, so... Right now, it's three, uh, low 3%. Right now? Mm hmm I'm not your house? Yeah, interest, because the interest rate is low now for 30 years. No, for 3.1 something. Oh, well, whatever it was, let's say the, the rate was like 1% for him, and you have that 1%. Instead, you, you, you don't want the 20% to stack up on you or it's going to burn you. So you decide to use the one of 1% so that you get hurt less interest-wise. And you use that money from the loan to pay off that loan. So you're, you're borrowing money to pay. You borrow money and you borrow more money to borrow. Let's say you borrow $5 and you can't pay it off. So you borrow five more dollars to pay off that $5. So you still owe them $5. So that was the myth that that will um, have you have one smaller payment because it saves you interest. The truth is debt consolidation is dangerous because you only treat the symptom. Meaning... By the time you treat the the very big interest, you'll pretty much be very com comfort comfortable, and you don't you only treat the symptom. I see the coronavirus. You treat the symptom, but you don't treat the virus itself. And he's talking about how dangerous that would be, and how he's talking about the name. I'm not sure how it has to do with anything, but um, so. Uh, I said a friend of his works for a debt consolidation firm who's a bunch of statistics say that 78% of the time after someone consolidates his credit card debt, the debt goes right back because he still doesn't have a game plan to pay it off. Meaning, if they can't pay off the interest, why? Like they're probably not going to pay off the other loan either. So either way, it's just not going to help you. And myth is borrow more than my home value is wise because I restructure my debt. Let's say the house is one hundred k. You don't. You only need to borrow like a hundred k to buy the house. But instead, you borrow one fifty k just in case something crazy happens and the value goes down, and you will have that money that you could pay your agent so that they could sell their house. But the truth is, you're stuck in that house, which would be very dumb, because. Um, when you borrow a lot of money, then you can't escape because you literally cannot sell your house because you owe one hundred fifty k on it. So, trapped, okay. you cannot leave. So, 
Um, the myth, the myth for the next one would be, okay. myth would be, if no one used debt, our economy would collapse. Here's what a lot of financial teachers teach that, but, uh, like, uh, that like at colleges and stuff, but their logic is that if no one borrows money, no one will become rich because the rich take from the poor, and uh, loaning companies and people who work for the banks and stuff will lose all their money because no one's going to be borrowing the money. But <clears throat> the truth is, nope, it was it would prosper. So, oh, hey, I didn't know that. I was here. And you were, there was a Snoopy or the Spoo, so. Alright, so he's going to explain how. So, alright, um, it's, it's, this story is pretty much everywhere. So, it's going to be very, very hard to explain. It first started off talking about how, yeah, I'm not sure how this one would relate. Um, I'm just not going to try to explain it because I was going to be stuttering the whole time. So, pretty much, it would be, I was going to try to explain a little. If no one used debt, yes, the bankers would go out of business. But the people who aren't bankers would prosper because we wouldn't be crazy in debt. And how there would be no more welfare because um, no more people would have to borrow. And if there's no more debt... Or if no one used that, then welfare would no longer have to be a thing. And we have less taxes because the government could just quit welfare program. Or they could continue and they continue to take our money. But um, that's highly unlikely. All right, now we're moving on to... All right, that's just one last summary. That is not a tool. Are you beginning to understand that that is really not a tool? This myth has been kept and spread for a really long time. So you don't let it bite you. Make sure you know that debt will not help you. I mean, it can, but I'm going to explain that. If you if, if you want to play the risk, if you want to jump in the shark pool and learn how to fight the shark, that will help. But a lot of times, you might die. So, um, now we're going on to Chapter 4, Money Myths, the, the non-secrets of the rich. Now, <clears throat> now that I risk denial, that's not important, then... Great, we have a lot more myths and truths. So you have quick, easy money. Whenever I hear the word, the secret to riches, I know that's a scam. Like, you think about it. A lot of a lot of ads say, I have a secret to tell you. The secret to become rich is, like, I do, I do not want to hear it. Like, so many people have said it. My dad got scammed by it, and I'm not doing this anymore. So, because the secret to riches is not a secret. It's, I know, it's not a secret. People know how to do it, but they're not willing to. You know you have to. You know you have to try. You know you have to spend a lot of time. You have to sacrifice a lot. But the thing is, a lot of people aren't willing to sacrifice. A lot of people know how to build a house, but they don't want to build it. So, not a lot of people know how to build a house, but a lot of people know how to do this, but they're not willing to try. Like exercise. A lot of people know how to exercise, but not people are willing to try. A lot of people know what skydiving is, but they're not willing to try. It's not a secret. Everyone knows what it is. But we don't want to try. And we don't want to know. So we don't attempt. Mm -hmm. So, quick, easy money, just don't fall for those. Because if it was easy, if it was quick, everyone would be... Whatever. I just, that's like a lot more or something aside. But if it was that easy, you'd see a bunch of billionaire morons walking around. So, um, it's not going to be easy gonna be a really hard trip and a lot of people are not gonna like hard trips but you're gonna to have to do it you have to do what you have to do and there there are slight shortcuts but not to the point you could be lazy you still have to work not not work but you still have to try a lot and it's not gonna be free it's not gonna be it's not gonna be like easy money because nothing's easy money because if, if someone advertised easy money everyone's being like Free money, I want some, and then they end up just um, probably failing. So let's go on to the myth versus truth. And the myth is everything we find will retire. I know I'm going through crazy stuff. I know I'm not saving, but it'll be okay. Retirement, yes, please, retirement. It's going to be all fine. You know, then it says the cavalry isn't coming, meaning that okay. He started talking out of nowhere something about medieval knights. 
and not one part in the book has it talked about that before so for the first time i read it got really confused until they started talking about the moral of the story so pretty much it means that you're not going to be okay due to retirement it's you you have to invest in your future you have to save for your future not save that much because inflation is going to catch you but you have to plan for your future. You're like, you know, I'm not going to plan for my future. I'm just going to retire. That's all I know. Just retire, retire, retire. You don't want to do that. Retirement is not going to let you live. Retirement means oatmeal three times a day and still just sitting in bed doing nothing. You're not going to be able to have Wi-Fi. It's going to be too expensive. And you're just eating a bunch of bad food. If you want to have a good future, you have to start investing and planning. So Because your future is more important than now. Now I mean, it's important too. I mean, now it's also important, but it de- it depends. Like, think of soccer. Are you going where the which is more important, where the ball is now or where the ball is going to be? You try to plan where the ball is going to be. You're thinking, okay, the ball is going to go there, and once it goes there, I'm going to relax. But you don't know where the ball is going to go yet. So, oh, and then you have to prepare for all scenarios in case you think the ball is going to go left, but it ends up going right. So. Be prepared. And yeah, now is important too. In case the ball doesn't move at all, you can go for now. And it's important. The future is also very important. And the next thing is gold is a good investment in recovering from economy collapses. I really do not understand why people invest in gold. But the truth is, gold has a poor track record and isn't used when the economy collapses. The common sense is gold will be very valuable when the economy collapses. The truth is it really isn't. Look at the Great Depression. You think the problem was that we didn't have any money? The truth is we did have money. We had too much of it. We had way, way too much to the point we became broke. You have... I I don't need the ding ding. So That's why the Great Depression started. Because the value of money depleted. Like... Think of gold as money, and even though it does a crisis, it was a gold recovery. But the thing is, the value of the gold will go down. Like the Great Depression, like I heard somewhere, but I'm pretty sure it's true that they printed a ton of money to get our. The U.S. printed a ton of money to get rid of our debt, but they didn't realize that there'd be crazy inflation, and people started to burn money instead of coal because it was a lot cheaper. It's like free paper, and it's cheaper than firewood and all that stuff. So. There was one point where there was no money, but at that, after that, they printed so much, there was too much money. And man, I wish I saved that money from the Great Depression. We'd be so wealthy now, but whatever. <laughs> I don't want the Great Depression to come back again. It's already happening right now. So, I mean, it's not for the value of money is the same. We, we still love our money, so. Actually, it's going down now, the value of money. Well, it's, yeah, it's because. they're printing a lot of money. Yeah, more money is being created than it's being lost. Like, come on, who's who's gonna who's gonna lose one thousand bills per second? Like, how will we do that? Are we just gonna throw money? But it's easier to print. So every day, like every year, the value of dollars can go slightly, slightly down. Man, myth. This one is pretty much a debate against the four-hour work week. I can get rich quickly and easily by doing these groups, buy this DVD set, and work four hours a week. The truth is, no one develops and makes six figure income on three hours a week. Then you had the four hour work week saying, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> you're thinking, who do I believe? You believe both. You had the four hour work week. If you could work effectively and you turn that, you turn that 10 hours a day to four hours a week, or turning that, or turning that, um, uh, that 42 hours a week into um, four hours a week, that will help. If you want to settle, but if you want to live the super life, no one earns six figure income off of four hours a week. I mean, that could be, but if you want to earn like a ten figure income, no, no, like no, like a like an eight figure Not income when you get or seven figure income or six, then you, if you, even though you work effectively, you have to work both. Let's let's say you get, let's say you read ten pages in five minutes instead of reading ten pages in one hour. Yes, although you read 10 pages in 5 minutes, what are you going to do in that 55 minutes? You might as well use that to to, to get more things done. So that instead of um, working like 10, uh, 10, 10 pages in 1 hour, 
you could get 10 pages times 12 and you'll have like 120 pages an hour and that would seem like a lot a lot better so um work effectively and consistently do both and this guy says no one uh makes a lot of money off four hours a week yes you can make money however if you want to make more money then you're going to have to work consistently and very effectively thank you so um i, I think there's one oh gosh we have a lot lot more myths and truths i think i overread but that's okay there's no such thing as over reading so i'm gonna go through one more myth and truth you have cash value life insurance um so it's pretty much when you put I can't really explain it. Can you help me explain it? It's okay. Let's get that one here. Alright, I'm going to have to um, learn a little more about it. It's really weird to explain. The myth is, I mean, this one is really not a myth. It, re it really isn't a myth. I'm not sure why they added this. It says, playing the lottery and other forms of gambling will make you rich. I mean, that's only if you have an IQ of below too. So, I'm not sure if you guys think that. Hopefully, you don't think that because that is very unusual. I'm pretty sure it's common sense that you won't get really rich off the lottery, but... Um, I'm, I'm just gonna keep explaining. So, playing the lottery will make you rich, that's a myth, but the truth is the lottery is a tax on the poor and people who can't do math. That is true. Only the very, very dumb people play the lottery. I mean, it's okay, like, if you play, like, 10 cents every day or something, it's not gonna hurt you. It's just a little bit of fun because you have some fun in your life. But if you're that type of dude who plays, who play, spends, like, $20 a day, you need to just stop because like that that's a lot of money and you do not you could you could use all that money on different stuff and just don't play the lottery if you do then just don't like even once a week is not good just don't play it at all it's just, it's just the best thing don't play it at all so my grandpa quit playing the lottery he just played it for fun I and mean, he, did, he did earn like ten dollars once but um just don't play the lottery that much or don't play it at all because the odds are low and it just the lottery they just try to make money you sp they make more money off the lottery than they're giving away that's how the, the powerball and stuff makes their money so that is it for today i'm going to stick this bookmark right here so you know where we left off we did a lot of myths and truths hope you guys enjoyed this video see you guys next time learn something maybe visit my uh, my youtube channel called Catherine Cameron if you want to see some replays or if you're really curious about the my writings then you could come to Cameron fan blog hope you guys enjoyed this video see you guys next time bye for now